haven't been to. And so we can happily say that we are here today with little Joanna. We are also here with her namesake, Joanna. <laughs> so, Nick, I think you have some readings for us. I'm sorry, that's me. We're going to start, go ahead and start off with Psalms 127. Oh, thank you. Psalms 127. A song of ascents of slow mo. Unless the Lord builds up the house, those who build it uh, labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, the children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb are a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them, who shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gates. Psalms 128. A song of ascent. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks his way. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zeol. May you see the prosperity of your Shalim all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. <laughs> He who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yatfol, Moshe, and Rome, David, Shlomo, Sarah, Rivka, Rakel, and Leah, may he bless Karen, daughter of Lynn, who has given birth. May he bless her newborn, Joanne, Joanna Christine, daughter of Nicholas. Bless, we pray, to you, her parents, that they may have the merit to raise her to Torah, the marriage can be as good deeds. I want to say, Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm going to take a small interlude just to explain where her name came from. Um, if you know our story, some of you know it a whole lot more than others. Um, we've been waiting for this for a long time in whatever capacity may be presented. Um, so we chose Joanna from the Hebrew um, Yohana, which means God is gracious. Um, this was not expected. This was out of our control 100%. Um, so we chose that as her first name. And then her middle name, Christine, is after Aaron's grandmother, who is um, sadly no longer with us. But we wanted to honor um, her legacy and her faithfulness. So that is where her name came from. So that's not in the script, but we wanted that to, to be known to everybody. Um, and so I just asked, we're going to say a few blessings over her. And then... <laughs> Very bottom, there is a section for y'all um, under the congregation. Watch over our child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless her and guide her. Keep her safe from the world. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when she is discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up as she falls, and in her heart may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of her life. May God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May it be the will of our Father in heaven that he set in your heart the love and awe of him all of your days, so that you do not come to sin. May your desire be for the Torah and the commandments. May your eyes look straight before you. May your mouth speak wisdom and your heart meditate in awe. May your hands be occupied with the commandments, and may your feet run to do the will of your Father in heaven. Your grandparents that are here, so I'll say it for a second. The God that forced in my fathers Abraham and Isaac Paul, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the children. And in them let my name be carried on in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Our sister may they grow in the thousands of ten thousands. Karen's going to read Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. 
because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffer distress and anguish. Then I call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe even when I was even when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, All mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. All right, let's go ahead and have Robert now. Go ahead and offer some, some commentary on the Torah portion this week. And then we will be moving on into our blessings. No, you're not hearing things. Yes, you're seeing correctly. You can check again. The Midbar 6 repeats the same description, not three times, but 12 times. One for each tribe except Levi. This is interesting because all of the tribes are different sizes. It would make sense that a large tribe would give more of its bountiful resources while smaller tribes might give less. Not so when it comes to dealing with the Mishkan. Like the Pidyon Habin or the Sanctuary Tax, everyone gives the same amount, rich or poor. When we enter God's presence, Trivial titles and human wealth have no bearing in his awesome presence, and we stand, each of us, as equal. Even the Kohen Haggadot, the high priest, loses his golden robes when he enters into the presence of the Almighty, and he stands looking like any other Kohen on Yom Kippur. Of course, unique qualities and positions still exist, as seen elsewhere in the Torah. Not everyone was a Kohen. Not everyone was Kohen Gadol. Not everyone was a son of Gershon, entrusted with carrying curtains. And not everyone was an elder responsible for giving the gifts described in the chapter. Likewise, in the body of Mashiach today, not everyone is a Levite entrusted with blessing Birkat Kohanim. Not everyone is a man or woman with their different roles in the community. And not everyone is a Jew or a Gentile with their separate responsibilities to the Torah. These distinctions are not arbitrary, which we must remember in our era of gender confusion. Yet before his presence, all such distinctions, titles, and wealth we've accumulated for ourselves pale when, con when contrasted to his surpassing worth. What Robert just alluded to, thank you, Robert, is something called distinction theology. And it's very confusing, well, it's not confusing, it's very obvious, actually, that people have different responsibilities to different parts of the Torah. And yet, it's one of the hardest things for a lot of people who come into the Messianic community to accept. So be aware that, yes, the Torah reinforces distinction, but at the same time, in God's presence, a lot of that starts to pale away. Go 
Going on over to page I think it's six. Yeah. Yeah. This blessing is recited by someone who has recovered from a serious illness, returned safely from a long journey, or survived any kind of danger, including childbirth. Does anyone here have some good news that they want to bless for today? You say you do? Yeah, she had a uh, uh, ultrasound uh, endoscopy and it came out negative. Good. That's good. That's good. Thank God. And also, I've been able to uh, do more work around the house. And, you know, before, well, right after the surgery, I wasn't able to lift anything. And now, you know, like back to normal almost. Good. Thank you. So, we're good. Yeah. Gabriel, I said we're going to keep praying for you until we're at 10 out of 10. Or an 11 out of 10. So we're doing better. Good. Anyone else? All right, page 108. Bill and Carol are not here today. So <coughs> instead of reading a list, I'm gonna petition up a few people, and then I'm gonna turn around, and I'm gonna point, and as my hand goes across, you just tell me, you just shout out a name of someone that you're praying for. Misha Baraka Patinu, Abraham Yitzhakia Akko, Sarah Rukka Rukka Leia, who here are, Yvare Yarpe et Hakole, Yantan Simka, Vishmaim, Janelle, Tammy, Gabrielle, Gail Renee, Juanita, and Rick. Sam and Sierra. Sam. My daughter, Linda and Larry. And also the Sally's father. May the Holy One give him support, courage, determination, patience, and spirit. Grant them physical and spiritual fullness. May God any kind of strength and healing to relieve body and soul together with others who are ill. And let's say, Amen. 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 Okay. Oh, God, Amen. Let's speak. 110. Hear the voice of God when they call. Be gracious to them and answer them. In your hands, hands is so powerful. Grant them patience, faith, and courage. Never let despair overwhelm them. Grant them of your giving power so that vigor of body and mind they may return to their loved ones for a life of blessing and sustenance. Yekda <laughs> Amen. For us, may his kingdom may come soon and establish his divine kingdom soon in our days with the near future. Let's say amen. amen. Or another way of saying it, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on our best days in heaven. Let's go ahead to the Zetat Torah. So that's Takba. Page 114. <coughs> and, um, Bill, can I borrow you to address the Torah scroll a minute? Can you come over here and sit down? And who else do I want to pull from today? Um, gosh. Uh, Gabriel, can you help me? Okay. 
the Torah which Moshe set before the Israelites as God's word by Moshe and ya la 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 ya la 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 God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words that were spoken in truth. Praise are you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah and Moses your servant, and Israel your people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. Judges 13, verse 2. There was a certain man of Zerah of the tribe of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have not borne children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore be careful, and drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the woman, and he shall begin to save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, A man of God came to me, and his appearance was like the appearance of the angel of God, very awesome. I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to us and teach us what we are to do with the child who will be born and God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman, and she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So the woman ran quickly and told her husband, Behold, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me. And Manoah arose and went after his wife, and came to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now, when your words come true, what is to be the child's manner of life, and what is his mission? And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. She may not eat of anything that comes from the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, or eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Please, let us detain you and prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, If you detain me, I will not eat of your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering, then offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name, so that when your words come true, we may honor you? And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name, seeing that it is wonderful? So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering, and offered it on the rock of the Lord, the one who works wonders. And Manoah and his wife were watching. And when the flame went up toward heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord went up in the flame of the altar, now Manoah and his wife were watching, and they fell on their faces to the ground. 
The angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, for we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering at our hands, or tell us all these things, or now announce to us such things as these. And the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And the young man grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him in Mahanaedan, between Zorah and Eshtapel. Praise are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in every generation, the faithful God who says it and it is done, who speaks and it is fulfilled. We'll now have a reading from the New Testament. <coughs> the reading this morning from Baruch and other Shah is from Luke's Gospel. For those who'd like to follow along, this is the first chapter of Luke's Gospel beginning at verse 11. I'm actually going to begin at verse 10 and read through verse 20. All the people were outside praying at the time of the incense offering when there appeared to him an angel of Adonai standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was startled and terrified at the sight. But the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elisheva, will bear you a son, and you will name him Yochanan. He will bear joy and a delight to you, and many people will rejoice when he is born, for he will be great in the sight of either night. He is never to drink wine or other liquor, and he will be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh even from his mother's womb. He will turn many of the people of Israel to Adonai their God. He will go out ahead in the spirit and power of Eliyahu to turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready for Adonai's people prepare. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? For I'm an old man. My wife too is well on in years. I am Gabriel, the angel answered him, and I stand in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you, to give you this good news. Now because you didn't believe what I said, which will be fulfilled when the time comes, you will be silent, unable to speak until the day these things take place. Continuing on page 117. For all God's words are truth and righteousness. For you are faithful, Adonai our God, and your words are trustworthy. Not one word of yours is ever taken back unfulfilled. For you are a dependable and merciful ruler. Praise for you, Adonai the God, who is dependable in all of your words. Have mercy on Zion, for she is our life's home. Save the humble soul quickly in our day. Praise for you, Adonai, who causes Zion and her children to rejoice. Cause us to rejoice, Adonai, our God, with Elijah the prophet, your servant, and with the kingdom of David, your anointed. May he quickly come and gladden our hearts. May no stranger sit on his throne, and may no others inherit his glory. For you vowed to him by your holy name that his light would never be extinguished. Praise are you, Adonai, shield of David. And for your Torah, and for the worship, and for the prophets, and for the Shabbat day that you gave us, Adonai, our God, for holiness and for rest, for glory and splendor. For all of these things, Adonai, our God, we thank you and praise you. May your name be praised perpetually forever. Praise for you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Continue on page 121. And 121 is a prayer for our country, our country, our world, stand in desperate need of prayer. And I ask you not just to repeat these words with me, but to pray these words with me. Our God and God of our ancestors, please accept the mercy our prayer for our land and its government. 
Teach our leaders the values of your Torah. Help them understand your rules of righteousness. The land will never let peace and tranquility, prosperity, and freedom. Not by God's spirit from all flesh, send your spirit to all the inhabitants of our land, and plant love and brotherhood, peace and friendship among all the nationalities and faiths who dwell in it. Uproot from their hearts any hatred or enmity. Jealousy or rivalry to fulfill the yearnings of your children and delight in its honor and who desire to see it be a light for all the nations. May it be your will that our land will be a blessing to all the inhabitants of the world and that friendship and freedom will reign between them and that the vision of your prophets will soon be fulfilled. Amen. And on page 123. A prayer for the state of Israel, and again Israel stands in constant need of prayer while they await the recognition of their Mashiach. Would you pray this prayer with me? Our heavenly parent, rock of Israel and its redeemer, bless the state of Israel for the flowering of our redemption. Shield it under your loving wings and spread over it your sukkah of peace. Send your light and truth to its leaders and the sons and the the family with your good of us. Strengthen the hands of the defenders of our holy land and lead them to us to deliver us. Crown their efforts with victory, grant peace to the land and eternal happiness to its inhabitants, and let us say, Amen. Daddy, can I ask for you? Would you like to hear the Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Page 130. Bow down before our nine beauty of holiness, and I voice of the waters, the God's glory thunders, and I of the mighty waters, God's voice sounds of power, and I voice sounds of beauty, and I voice breaks the cedars of Lebanon, and I shatters the cedars of Lebanon. Let's go on over to page 134 and 135. When the ark rested, Moshe would say, Return I night to millions of Israel. Rise up at night to your resting place, the temple, you and the ark of your strength. May the priests be clothed in righteousness and your faithful sing with joy. 
For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed ones. I have given you good teaching, do not leave my Torah. It is a tree of life for those who hold on to it, and those who support it are happy. Its paths are pleasant, and all its ways are peaceful. Return to us at night, and we shall return. Renew our days as in days of old. That's Kaini. We're going to start from six lines from the bottom on page 134. <laughs> Et kain di lama hazidem baha betohpeha lehushar durkeya durkei no ifoni hotega shalom ashivenu adonai el efadi shuha kahadei shamenu. So we know that the Torah is true, and the commandment is holy, true, and good. Contentment awaits those who hear the word of the Lord and obey it. It's the only wise God. To the only wise God. To the only wise God. Yeshua Messiah. Yeshua Messiah. Be glory forever. Be glory forever. Be glory forever. Forever. Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Ben David Israel, Ben Avi Melem Israel, Ben Avi Melem, Ben Avi Melem, Ben Avi Melem Yeshua HaMashiach Ben David Melech Israel, Jesus the Messiah, Son of David, King of Israel. Amen. All right. Let's go on over to Romans 12. So about, I'd say about three weeks ago, I announced that we had two more lessons, really, and then we were done with Romans 12. I can now stand before you and say with certainty that it's probably going to be about four. So just so you're aware of where we are in tracking with this right now. Um, we've been working through Romans 12 and talking about how do we understand Romans 12, 9 through 21 from a Messianic Jewish point of view. And what we're seeing a lot of here are themes of constant prayer, Shachrit, Minka, um, on Shabbat, Musaf, of course, and then Ma'ariv. We see themes here of mitzvot and honor, doing good deeds, combine that with love. Let's review it. Don't let love be a mere outward show. Recoil from what is evil and cling to what is good. Love each other devotedly with brotherly love. And set examples for each other in showing respect. Don't be lazy where hard work is needed, but serve the Lord with zeal or spiritual fervor. Rejoice in your hope, be patient in your troubles, and continue steadfastly in prayer. Share what you have with God's people and practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and don't curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be sensitive to each other's needs. Don't think of yourself as better than others, but make humble people your friends. Don't be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but try to do what everyone regards as good. If possible, and to the extent that it depends on you, live in peace with all. So today, we're going to talk about that first phrase of that final sentence. If possible, so far as it depends on you. Next week, we will be talking about how to live at peace with all, to live a life of shalom. But I want us to focus in on this word, as far as it depends on you. So I heard a, a joke, and I don't like telling jokes from up here, but you know, I, I, I thought this joke was, this, this one fits, you know? Um, there was once a, a college department, an engineering department, and an airplane had decided to give this entire class 
uh, this graduating class a vacation. And so they said, we're going to pay for the airplane, we're going to pay for the, pay for the hotel, we're going to pay for everything you just got to show up. And so the whole class shows up, I'm sure it's summer break, or it's, you know, Christmas break, winter break. And they're in the airplane, and they're the only ones there. And the pilot makes an announcement over the intercom. And he says, just so you know, this airplane was built by you, the engineering students. And all the students scream and run away. <laughs> only one remains, their professor. And their professor says this, he says, I know my students. I know them very well. I know, I know their abilities better than they know their abilities. And I know with 100% certainty that this airplane will never take off. <laughs> yeah. I assume that's a sense of humor too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. God knows our ability. Yes. And he does not hold us to a level higher than that which we are capable of performing. What do I mean by this? Well, there's a great saying in rabbinic Judaism, and it is, we do what we can. How many of us know that if we were following the Torah exactly today, we would be offering like sacrifices right now in the Beis Hamikdash? Okay. Little problem with that. Um, where is the Beis Hamikdash? In history. <laughs> in history. Good answer. I was going to say it doesn't exist. Or there is one, but it's in the heavens. In a better world. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have it, but we can't. And we can't offer sacrifices, so we do what we can. We can't send sacrifices, so we offer up the prayers instead. <coughs> and in Shakari morning, exactly. I'm teaching Hunter right now. We uh, for right before our Pesuka de Zimra, we read a description of the daily sacrifice, along with other functions in the Mishkan. But the sacrifice is the most important part because we can't offer the sacrifices, so what we do in light of that is we study. We study the sacrifices, and we pray that our recitation of the, of the scripture is counted as if we had offered the daily sacrifices at its point in time and place. Now, if there was a face Hamidash still on the earth, things would be different. Reciting wouldn't be good enough. We, Israel would be expected to perform the mitzvah. But there isn't a temple right now, so we just have to study, and we have to offer the prayers at the correct time, such as the Amidah. And so, that, see, that's an example of we do what we can. Just so everyone knows, this last Shabbat was a, was a smashing success. Who was here? Yeah, I don't know how to rate successes here. You know, it's spiritual, if we don't count people. I just feel like last week was a success. A lot of important things were said. We had a lot of great lessons. We had great speakers. We had about four hours of teaching, two hours of prayer, which is good. But there was a great question raised for the, for the Q&A with me. And the question was, well, I, my boss says I have to work on Shabbat, and I can't always observe Shabbat. What do I do? And I told her, I said, a lot of people have to work on Shabbat. A lot of people, especially like first responders, doctors, soldiers, these people have to, have to work on Shabbat. We'd have a very bad world if we did, because preservation of life takes precedence even over the Shabbat. But I also said, in some ways, because you don't have a, a from a religious boss, you can't really perform the mitzvah and in order to sustain your own life right now, you have to work on Shabbat sometimes. I said, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And what we can do is we can pray that your boss has a change of heart, or maybe you'll find another employer, one that allows you to honor the Shabbat. I said, but you do what you can. Sometimes you have to work on Saturday, but maybe you can light Friday night candles. Maybe you can say a blessing. Maybe you can say kish. Maybe you can say havdalah. You know, these are things that we can still do. Maybe you can sit back in the back room and offer some Musaf prayers. You know, there is still a capacity here which we're capable of fulfilling. And I said something else. I, I said, you know, really, we shouldn't be working the screens, we shouldn't be turning on the lights, we shouldn't be driving cars. Because what's that word in Hebrew? It's malakha. It's to create, it's to craft. 
And anything that creates or crafts or changes an object from one condition to another, it breaks the Shabbat. And I said, but we do all of those things here. I said, because have you seen the housing around here? I'm not walking to shul from some of this housing. I said, my dream is one day we have houses and apartments surrounding this area with sidewalks leading here so that I can get dressed, say my blessings, and then I can walk on over to shul and I don't have to drive a car. I said, but we don't have that option right now. We do what we can. One day we hope to have nice windows in here so that we don't have to turn on the lights or maybe we'll have them on a timer, who knows. But we can't do that right now, so we do what we can. You see, I, I, when I was a child, I heard this parable about the Torah. I want to know if any of us have heard a similar parable. That the Torah is good and true and, and exacting, but oh my word, he's harsh. He's like a good husband. Always works. Always provides. Always, you know, he, he's, he wears the tie. He's, he's, a, he's a perfect husband. It's not like me who lounges around in the bathrobe in the mornings. You know, he's a good husband, and he's, he's very meticulous. He's immaculate. And he puts these very harsh requirements on his wife. You know, you're, when you wake up, you must make the eggs for me just right. You must make the coffee for me at this exact temperature, and if not, you break my law. How many of us have heard parables like this before? Yeah, okay, like two of us. That's good, because I, I have to think back to parables like that, and I say, has he, has this, have they ever read the Torah? <laughs> there's like so much room for grace. And, and like there, there's, there's room for compromise, and there's room for, well, if we can't do this, then we do this. What, the, what in the world are, uh, is up with those sacrifices? If God is always enticed to put these exacting, harsh orders on us. I think it's hilarious because we have the Torah and we have the Christian world, which largely says the Torah is too hard to keep. That's why we have grace. But then you have the Muslim world, which says the exact opposite. The Torah is good. It's, it's a nice first step, but it's way too easy. We're going to make it way harder. So instead of praying three times a day, we'll pray five times a day. And, you know, instead of, uh, instead of a fine for stealing, we'll just chop off the hand. So we have half the world, a third of the world, saying it's too easy, and the other third saying it's too hard. And I just gotta say, God never expects more from us than we can already do. I hear another complaint a lot. Oh, God made the Lord 613 commandments. 613 commandments. Can you imagine adhering to all 613 commandments every single day? How many of us have heard that one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, most of those laws are like, how to do judicial hearings. Most of those, a lot of those laws are about how the Kohanim are supposed to enforce purity on the cities. If, like, say there's leprosy or murder, a lot of them pertain to the temple. A lot of them pertain only to men or only to women. The truth of the matter is, we in the United States of America, to adhere to our secular government, <coughs> must adhere to thousands of laws. And we don't talk about how hard it is. It's just life. I told Noah and Hunter earlier, I said, you are at the perfect age to learn Hebrew. Very often, the best, the more we immerse ourselves, even from a young age, into the Torah and this way of living, the easier it gets. The easier it gets. You know, you don't think about it. You have to go send me on the highway. You just do it. You know, um, all these commands, you just do it. You just do them. They're, they're not hard. They're not... Exhausting. Now, I know some of us may be confused, but please understand that the Torah is not about salvation. You know, that's a completely different animal. Chosenness is a different animal. And if we're going to the Torah expecting to find this will enable me to stand before God's presence, I've got bad news. It's not a new, not by our, what is our righteousness? What are we? We're nothing. We know that. We know that we stand in grace. And so if you try to go through the route of I'm going to earn, that's where we get to the heresies that Paul has to deal with. But the Torah by itself, God never expects more from us than we can. We do what we can. And I, I believe in the future we will be able to do more than we're doing now. Because I can say this much, as a congregation, we are doing more now than we were a year ago. My, my friend and mentor, kind of, he, he told me, he said, 
A person who's dressed as a police officer should be a police officer. He said, you guys look like a synagogue, but you're not. And I said, give it time. Thank you. Give it time. We are so much further than we were at one time, and we're going in a better direction. And since then, he sent me a few messages saying, wow, uh, good job on this. Good job. You know, like he's, he recognizes the growth. <clears throat> and understand that we are at a stage, and God, Hashem understands we do what we can, and our goal is to keep on growing and doing what we can. So far as it depends on you, if possible, so far as it depends on you. God does not expect from you the impossible. God never expects from us the impossible. And this might fly in the face of what we've been taught about Scripture. The Sermon on the Mount is an impossible sermon just to show you how much you need grace. That's not what Messiah Yeshua said. If you look at the final section, he very much expects you to keep it. And he says that his yoke is easy. We do what we can. We do what we can and we let him worry about the rest. We do what we can and for the rest there is grace. That flies in the face of much of our Christian church surrounding which says it's just grace and we don't even need to worry about performance. What I think it's done is created a culture that is very nonchalant in its observance and its seriousness and its approach to God. So we do what we can. That is, the, that is the limit of the Torah. I have a two-pronged message for us today. Two-pronged. One is encouraging, one is scary, because it always is. One is encouraging, one is scary. The first one I've already sort of hit on. We do what we can. We do what we can. So please don't worry. Don't fret. You do what you can, okay? You are fellowshipping with Messiah every single day. You are in prayer. You are in scripture. You are enjoying him. You are trying your best to live out these commandments. Good. Relax. And anything else that you lack, he will work on with you. So if you look at me and you're like, gosh, i got to learn all this Hebrew, you know, or like you're looking at Tan and you're saying, if only I could be like Tan, you're looking at Robert saying, well, one day I'll be at Robert's level. Don't worry, it's not a competition. Your job is to focus on God, to focus on your walk with him, and he will grow you as you mature and as you develop into the fullness of Mashiach. So relax. God loves you. And he will absolutely understand that we have our hang-ups, we have our problems, and he understands and he doesn't exact more from you than you are capable of performing. That's the first part. And that's going to speak to half of you. The other half, here's my message to you. We do what we can. And God's not fooled when we say, we try. And he's looking and saying, are you? I'm not really seeing it. I hope I don't fall into that one. I've had people come by and they're telling me how how they're they're trying their best to, to seek God and oh they're just living with their girlfriend. Are you seeking God? Well we're just sinners saved by grace. That's kind of a big one. That's kind of a that's not, I think, bad thoughts or I get tempted when I get, you know, like I I I, I have road rage. This isn't one of those things. This is this is a pretty serious lifestyle choice on your part, buddy. I'm not convinced you're doing what you can. And the truth of the matter is, God is not fooled. God knows what we're capable of. He knows what we're not capable of. And he's not calling us to do everything. Okay, Messiah Yeshua did not have to fulfill the mitzvot for being a Kohen. He did not have to fulfill the mitzvot for being a woman. He did not have to fulfill the mitzvot for being a Gentile. But he lived his lane and he did it perfectly. God does not expect more from you than you can possibly accomplish, but at the same time, the same time he knows what you're capable of and if we hold on to our sins and say well I can't beat the sin God's looking at you saying yes you can that's why I sent the Messiah to die for you and give you the, the Holy Spirit to enable you to live victorious over 
these issues. Amen. On one hand, there's grace. On the other hand, there is an expectation. And if you have to worry about it, the odds are you are doing what you can. If you're not worrying about it, there's a good chance you're not doing what you can. Let's go on over to Revelation chapter 21. I'm going to start in verse. I'm going to start in verse. Eh, we'll start in verse five. We'll start at the beginning of the paragraph. Here, Yeshua is talking. Messiah Yeshua is talking to John, the apostle. Then the one sitting on the throne said, "Look, I am making everything new." Also, he said, "Write these words." Uh, he said, "Write these words are trustworthy and true." And he said to me, "It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega." The beginning and the end. To anyone who is thirsty, I myself will give water free of charge from the fountain of life. He who wins the victory will receive these things. I will be his God, and he will be my son. Look at that. He said to everyone who has the victory, that is, everyone who overcomes sin. And we've talked about this already in Revelation chapter uh, 2 and 3, where he talks about again and again the overcomers. But then he says this, but as for the cowardly, the untrustworthy, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those involved with the occult and with drugs, um, idol worship, and all liars. Their destiny is in the lake of fire, burning, uh, the lake burning with fire and sulfur in the second death. So if I fall into one of those eight sins, I must not be an overcomer. These must be the sins that if they overcome me, they truly overcome me. And unfortunately, all liars is in that category. And so... You know, it's very easy sometimes to slip into what because that one is just so easy. And yet, these are sins. I don't know about you, but it's easy for me just to, you know, just try to dismiss something, get out of the way. Guys, Scripture says all men are liars. But we must not be overcome by it. We must overcome all the sins which come against us. I've heard it taught from behind the pulpit that men cannot help but lust. I beg to differ. It's a hard battle for us. But Messiah should have died and gave us the Holy Spirit so we could overcome it. And women, they have their own issues. Stereotypically, these are categories that we deal with. Guys, God knows what you're capable of. And he recognizes effort. And he recognizes that when we're doing the absolute best we can. And he recognizes when we're not. And so my encouragement to you is, just do what you can. So far as it depends on you, if possible, so far as it depends on you. Just do what you can, and he will take care of the rest. Amen? Amen. That's what we call grace. Okay? That's what we call grace. You often hear grace misunderstood. Grace is not removed from us actively seeking him. Once we do, that's when we start to abuse it. So grace is understanding we're doing what we can, and we understand that we have no right to stand before him. But at the same time, we are seeking him. We are going through the process of what is called being made perfect. And we let him worry about the rest. Page 162. <laughs> hey, hello, hey. Stand up. 
God. As is written in his Torah, you shall know therefore this day, and keep it in mind that on ice God above, in heaven above, and on earth below, there is no other. Go ahead and read page 166 and 167, find it by yourself. We'll come back to that at the end. As it is written in the Torah, the ruler, the ruler shall rule forever and ever. The prophet Zechariah said that God will be ruler over all the earth. On that day, God will be one, and God saying, one. Bene Emar. Bene Emar, Bahaya Adonai, Lamelech al-Kharet, Bayom Ha'hu, Bayom Ha'hu, Bi'eh Adonai Echad, Ushmo. May be seated. Page 168. Is there anyone here mourning the loss of a loved one somewhere in the last 11 months or is coming up on a one year anniversary? We can do this in English or in Hebrew. Would anyone like to read this for us? Do it in English. May God's great name be made great and holy in the world that God created according to God's will. May God establish the divine kingdom soon in our days, quickly and in the near future, and let us say, Amen. Amen. May God's great name be great and holy in the world. praise, glorified, and raised high, honored and elevated be the name of the Holy Blessed One, far beyond all blessings and songs, praises and comforts which people can say, and let us say, Amen. Amen. May there be abundant peace of heaven and light for us and for all this world, and let us say, Amen. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens make peace for us, all all in the world, and let us say, Amen. May you go out in the grace and peace of our Messiah, our Master, Messiah Yeshua. Um, be sure, by the way, we brought extra food today for the baby dedication, so be sure to go back and enjoy that during our own day. And uh, Shiloh Tov. I'll see you next week. Okay. Okay.